Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Karen McCarthy, host of the Vermont Collaborative Circle and the Pivot and Thrive community. We are guided by the mission of making Vermont the place where businesses and families thrive, and we come together to make better decisions as business owners in Vermont. We are joining together today uh, and recording, and so I'll ask that you um, feel free to ask questions in the chat. You're welcome to keep yourself muted or not, depending on your comfort. We'll be having a little bit of discussion and uh, look forward to hearing your ideas. Um, we'll also send you with some ideas that you can apply at home. Um, we are gathered today on Abenaki land and want to recognize the Abenaki people as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Um, and I'm just so grateful uh, for the opportunity to connect and share this time with Alex Arnold of Alma Coaching. Alex is an appreciative inquiry coach, and she helps people to elevate um, their mindset and apply positive psychology principles in their life. And so thank you so much for joining us, Alex. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Always nice to talk about this topic. And um, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, so I'll try to make this a little bit interactive and, and fun. So we'll play together a little bit. Um, and I'll start by giving you an overview of the field of appreciative inquiry and positive psychology, just, just so you understand a little bit how that came along. Um, and first, an introduction of myself. So I'm originally from France. That's where the accent is from, so that you don't have to guess for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> Um, and uh, my background is um, in tourism management. I was in the travel industry for over 11 years, and I'm also a bookkeeper part time. Do, I'm a project director uh, for a nonprofit in education uh, part time as well. And and then about 10 years ago, in my 30s, um, after a divorce, I decided it was also time for a career change. So I started studying organizational psychology. And I came across this fantastic program at Champlain College on appreciative inquiry. Um, that was really a life changer, honestly. Um, it really did help me change my mindset as I was you know, moving like through the years after a divorce and a career transition that's still happening. <laughs> so, um, so I decided to become a coach. Um, and, and I'm just finishing up my coach training program uh, across fingers. I'll be an accredited International Coaching Federation coach next month. And, and I'm using appreciative inquiry in my coaching. So that's really with the goal of helping other people shift their mindsets. And the, the tools um, are really um, not easy to use, but simple tools. And, and I really do believe in, in this approach and how it can help people in their everyday life. So again, feel free to jump in any time. Um, so positive psychology, the reason I bring this up is because it's kind of the umbrella um, and appreciative inquiry falls underneath. So the history behind that is it's a fairly new field, a fairly new movement about the you know, 25 years or so when um, Traditional needs psychology has been the science that studies disorders, um, illnesses, ab abnormal behavior. And so it's a fairly new question to ask, well, what makes people well? Like what, how do people thrive? What are the elements that they need to bring into their lives to really uh, go above and beyond? And, and that doesn't mean just not being ill and not, um, you know, not facing illness, but taking it to the next level. And so that happened in the, um, again, about 25 years ago, the president of the American Psychological Association was Martin Seligman, and he's the father of positive psychology. So if you um, look that up, he's the name that will come up um, over and over. And it's kind of revolutionized, not only the field of positive, the field of psychology, but now it's um, used in business. It's um, used by organizations and, and by individuals. So no matter where you're at um, in your life, like the positive psychology tools really can help you. And the same happened in the business world. Um, so inspired by those ideas and this research in, in psychology, 
um, there is another movement created in, in the business world. So that was in the early 90s. And the big name in that field is David Cooper Ryder. Um, so he kind of said, said the same thing, you know, instead of looking at organizations and what uh, problems they have and digging into those problems and trying to find the root causes of those problems, why don't we ask them what works well and what's a success for you and what makes your people motivated and really going above and beyond and, and performing really well. So it completely changed the way organizations look at change. Um, and it's now a very well-established approach, very well recognized for its success. It's been used by the US Navy, the Environmental Protection Agency, large, large corporations. So Apple uses appreciative inquiry, Johnson & Johnson, Hewlett Packard, the BBC, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters right in our backyard is a big advocate for um, AI. And even the United Nations, um, as well as um, in 1999, David Cooper Ryder met with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and the discussion centered about on AI was um, on the topic of bringing religions of the world together. So you can see that the applications are huge. Um, it doesn't matter how big, how small you are, there is a place for taking those principles and those practices and really making an impact. Um, and we even have a center for appreciative inquiry right now since 2014. So Champlain College is hosting the David Cooper Ryder Center for Appreciative Inquiry. So we're really lucky. We have lots of practitioners, lots of resources right in our backyard and, and there's a lot of, of buzz around it. So um, my particular focus is to take like these tools that are used mostly in business and in larger organizations and to bring them to individuals through coaching. So um, that's kind of my focus. And I'm going to share a video. So let's see. Struggling the different screens here. It's very short. Um, it's kind of a fun video introducing AI. It's uh, about three minutes, I believe. So share sound. Okay. You can see my screen. All right.
go. It's kind of a fun, um, fun summary. Um, and I love that video. Thank you. It's so <laughs> joyful, and it, I think it just covers um, in a really efficient way some of the frameworks and um, principles of appreciative inquiry in a way that make it really approachable. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, I, I really love it because the language is very, um, is very upbeat, and and again, a lot of the tools and the literature out there is. Um, for organizations, so it has more of a leadership um, business jargon. So um, this is really capturing the, you know, the feel for what I'm trying to do and and the way it can be. It's supposed to be playful and creative, and we use curiosity and questions. And so it's meant to be a very um, collaborative and generative and and lively um, approach. So um, so yeah, it's it's fun to watch that. So. Can you, can you talk a little bit about generativity? Because I, uh, it wasn't something that I was familiar with before learning more about appreciative inquiry. Um, is that something that you're, you can, can kind of help people to understand better? Yeah, sure. So um, the most powerful image that I, um, that I've come across is, um, is the word heliotropic. It's used a lot in the AI literature. Again, it's, um, you know, we, we, we inspire ourselves a lot from nature and what's happening in the world. Um, so heliotropic plants naturally, like a sunflower, they naturally turn toward the sun to grow and get their strength and get what they need. Um, so the idea is to mimic that. And when we do that, essentially we turn towards what gives us life and that's what helps us grow and motivates us. So that image is really a, a good one to capture the, uh, the mindset of appreciative inquiry. And so generativity um, is the idea that every word that you use, every question that you ask, um, they can really determine, um, they can really take you on a different path. It's kind of like a domino, two lines of dominoes in a V shape. You know, if you push one, you go one way, you can end up in very different directions. So with an appreciative question, for example, um, you want to create generativity. So you're gonna choose the words and choose the question, thinking about what is the one that can bring me the best outcome or bring me closer to my vision or my dream. And so it's like choosing that domino that's gonna take you here or take you there. And that can be just a word sometimes that can make that big difference. Thank you, that's helpful. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to explain a little bit why this is working because I don't want you to leave with the impression that oh we're all happy go lucky and everything's fine in the world and this is all uh, putting on rose colored glasses. So it really isn't. I mean, like I said, this is based in science and a lot of research at this point that shows why it works. So maybe you've heard already um, of the fight over flight response. It's a bit, you know very uh, well known uh, thing right now and. So most people understand that when they're stressed, um, their nervous system um, changes and uh, and their instincts take over. So you do get into that into that uh, space where you're in a fight or flight mode, and your focus narrows. You're ready to attack or retreat. So that's one response um, when there is a negative event or negative emotion or stressful uh, situation coming up. So the research now shows that the opposite is also true. So when we feel positive emotions, our, um, our system, uh, our physiology completely changes. And so experiencing positive emotion has been shown to improve collaboration, creativity, um, performance, just lots and lots of benefits in addition to health, physical health benefits. And again, the idea here is not to just say, okay, we all need to be happy all the time. <laughs> so it goes deeper than that and gives us tool to understand. So what really, what does that mean? So first of all, it's increasing our vocabulary. You know, we usually have lots of words to describe things that we don't like or the negative emotions that we're experiencing. And it's not unusual to um, have a harder time defining the positive feelings that we're experiencing. 
So when we talk about positive emotions, um, these can include joy, gratitude, serenity. Um, I don't know, any Lori or Karen, do you have any any positive emotions that come to mind? Um, connection, resonance, mm -hmm. um, sense of purpose or fulfillment. Right. Feeling like you're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hope is a positive mm -hmm. emotion, for example. We you know, sometimes forget that. Or interest, mm -hmm. um, curiosity. These are um, have positive um, impacts on, on our bodies. Of course, love and kindness um, and connection to others, like you said. Um, amusement, fun inspiration, pride, there are so many. <laughs> so if we learn to um, recognize them and name them, that's already a huge step. So that's one of the practices is to learn to identify and label um, the positive emotions that we're experiencing. And you probably know already that it doesn't have to be big. You don't need to have a a big life purpose to experience a positive emotion. Of course, that's going to also provide you uh, with happiness and fulfillment. But if you just smile at someone, make eye contact at someone, if you watch a puppy video, it works, <laughs> it really does. So there are really small ways and we call them micro moments of uh, positivity. So these micro moments, if we become intentional at building them into our days, um, they can multiply so much. So we get up in the morning with an intention to create positive emotion. And if we are more specific than just saying today, I'm going to have a good attitude, be happy. You know, you're trying to have those broad guidelines. It's a lot harder than if you say, hey, today I'm going to be really curious. And then, you know, challenge yourself to walk through the day and ask curious questions and see what happens. Um, you could make it a challenge to be particularly grateful and notice things that you're grateful for, whether they're really, really small in your daily routine or whether it's like larger scale, you know, the things that are right in the world. Um, how much gratitude can you experience for that? And it really is going to make a difference in everything else that happens in your day. So if you accumulate the effects of that, you, you can switch your mindset and really um, make an impact in your life and be more productive, you know, making good progress towards your goals. So the one last thing about not um, <clears throat> in seeing this as a Pollyannish kind of approach, um, if, if you think about what we just said, so if you watch the news, for example, you know, usually after watching the news, I don't know about you, but I feel really depressed and discouraged and I just- want Overwhelmed. To <laughs> right? And so now we know that that's actually not helping. It's not helping us. Um, it's not helping all our well-being or our health. And it's not helping the world either. So sometimes we're in situations that are really, um, you know, really difficult. And it doesn't feel right to find the silver lining. It's, it, it just feels inappropriate. But what I really believe is that if we can change this mindset and teach people that, no, it actually works. It's not selfish. It's it's the complete opposite because if you turn off the news and if you, um, you know, build up those positive emotions into your life, that's when literally your mind expands and you'll want to collaborate. You'll want to step out of your house and start making a difference in the world. So it's really, um, you know, take care of your own self first, and then um, the the ripple effects, the positive ripple effects, are really going to show outside in your families, communities, and the larger world. So that's um, of the, the big picture that, that can help us maybe not feel guilty when we're finding something that's right in a situation that's pretty awful. You know, if you're in a pandemic, uh, you know, you may not feel comfortable saying, you know, that something is going well for you, but it would actually help others and help yourself, you know, to do that. I think it's, it's so important to, to understand that the neural pathways that we, um, practice using like our brain is a, is a muscle and the the neural pathways that we practice using are the ones that become the natural normal pathways for our being and so if we're able to practice ways of um, finding 
mindfulness or connection or um, reframing what's happening for us with a sense of balance, um, then it can help us to be more resilient when there are really big challenges in our lives. Then we can pause, step outside of that flight, fright, freeze, flight, fright, freeze, <laughs> tongue twister, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, response and like recognize, okay, my body's filling with adrenaline. What am I going to do about it so that I can separate myself out from that negative, you know, fear reptilian brain and, and choose how I want to respond to something. And that is the difference I think in leadership and, and being able to, um, make a choice in a difficult situation, make the right choice in the difficult situation, especially, um, you know, in ambiguity and being able to pause see the under and understand the the landscape around you and um use your response as uh a strength um i think that that's a really powerful tool absolutely yes it's so well said and and it's a perfect transition to um kind of the, the next um part here because it really is a habit it's really a muscle that you develop and practices that you develop and um it like anything in the beginning you know it's a little <laughs> it's a little difficult and um but once you once you practice it, it becomes a habit you just have new questions popping into your head and because that's just what you've been training to do um so so i have this activity and karen um right do you want to play with me yeah let's do it <laughs> let's do it okay so we're practicing an activity that's called the flip and it's about reframing um, a situation, reframing a, a problem statement. So it's it's a very basic tool. It's the very powerful tool. I I love it. I just I think it's so um, incredible the responses and the changes that you notice when you start doing this. Um, so. So the idea with the flip is that you start with a problem statement. So Karen, if you want to think of, um, you know, so a problem, something. That sure. You're facing uh, my. And something. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So so keep it very short. You know, just like a sentence starting with I, blah blah blah, but like just a few words. You know, very clean and simple. Okay. I feel out of control because my internet has been unstable and I cannot show up reliably where I want to. Okay. How about you pick like maybe one or I'm hearing two different, so you're okay. feeling out of control or you can, you're, um, you feel like you can't show up the way you'd like to. Let's pick one just to keep it. Simple. Okay, okay. Um, oh, that's a good question. The root of it, um, I, let's say with I feel out of control because yep. my internet is unstable. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I totally commiserate. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it must be a big challenge when you're running a business out of your home and and we depend on on the internet so much. So I definitely hear you and and actually you know want to acknowledge like your resilience for showing up and and <laughs> taking this with stride. And you've really been a, a an example in the Pivot and Thrive community in how you handle that too. Oh, so, thank you. Uh, showing vulnerability is is um you know. A, way to connect as well, inspire others. So thank you for that. Um, so this is what you, so this is a three-step process. So step one, write your problem statement. So I feel out of control. It, is this what? Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, I feel out of control because my internet is not reliable. Okay, so that's what you don't want. I don't want to feel out of control, right? <laughs> okay. So step number two, if you flip that, so symbolically, you know, you can write it down, flip your piece of paper on the other side of the paper. If you had to write the exact opposite, what would that statement be? Hmm. I show up with ease where and when I want to. You're, you're skipping ahead because you I'm know sorry. about this already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have I have control and I access. Control. Beautiful. Yeah, I have control and access to internet. Yeah. So it starts with sometimes we you know we start thinking, okay, how do I fix this? And that's 
the problem um, solving mindset. You know, we have a problem and like, what would be the solution? So here we remove that, we relax and we say, I'm out of control, I'm in control. Exact mm -hmm. opposite, very mechanical process. So really removing the, you know, the, the negative uh, part of the sentence. I do, I don't, I have, I don't have. So playing with those words in very simple ways. So that would be the first step. And already, do you notice a difference when you say I'm out of control because I don't have internet and I'm in control because my internet is reliable. Yes. Any difference? Yes. <laughs> it feels better, right? I want to be in step internet. number two. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so that's where it starts. It's whether it's true or not, we're gonna leave that aside for now because it, it, that's not what it's about. It's not about stating what's real, you know, right in this moment. It's really, I'm assessing the situation um, and I'm noticing, you know, I'm feeling out of control. I don't want that. So if you can identify what you want instead, that's already a really big uh, shift in your mindset. And it, it's already triggering those positive emotions that are going to start, um, you know, helping you be more creative. How can I you know, how can I be more in control? And if it's a control issue and I don't have internet, how can I find control in other places? So that's, you start thinking about it differently when you know what you want. So the idea is that you're stuck in a problem and to get out, instead of analyzing the problem and staying right where you are, you're gonna take a step forward even by uh, phrasing what you want instead. So step number two, you know, what is it that, you do want. Thank you, Karen. You're fun, fun to play with. <laughs> no, thank you. It's it's helpful because um, it is something you have to practice. Think like we're so accustomed to focusing on what doesn't work, and um, success is not an accident. So reframing our mindset to look at what does work or what we envision for ourselves as possibility just sets a totally different um, trajectory for our our growth and poss you know the, the possibility we see for ourselves. So um, thank you. Yes, of course. So um, so now to really make it exciting and and um, you know get yourself even more motivated, um, we're going to turn this into what we call an appreciative topic. So with any goals that we set ourselves, you need to be clear on what you want. You need to be clear on your vision and the more um, details and the, the, yeah, the more clarity you can have on your vision, the more effective you're going to be and the more motivated you're going to be to reach that goal. So an appreciative topic, um, and I want to go back to the word appreciative for a minute because it really has two meanings appreciating can mean being grateful for um, but it can also mean appreciate in value so it, it really is a you know the both meanings really play into this approach because we're trying to be grateful for what we have and at the same time the goal of using this method is to elevate what we want or to grow and, and to appreciate what uh, is already working. So, so an appreciative topic, you would take that sentence. So I feel the, the, what you do want. So I feel in control because my internet is reliable. What's um, even a bigger dream? <laughs> but so, so if we turn this into a few sentences about your ideal situation, um, about you know control, internet, technology, everything like working really smoothly, what mm. would that look like? That's like a little, you know, a little vision you could describe. Sure, sure. Um, I'm able to connect with people and support their vision for growth. And my community understands my values, whether or not I am there with them. That <laughs> um, might've made it really confusing or you know, too, too many levels there, but uh, I realized is, you know, I don't want it to be about my control. I want it to be about serving the people, you know, the challenge I have is that my internet's not working. I want the internet to work, but I don't want it just to work. I want it to work so that it can elevate others. 
Right, beautiful, beautiful. So, so you've already taken it from, I want to be in control because I want my internet to work. It's not really the issue here, is it? You know, it's no. much deeper than that. And your purpose really comes through when you talk about, I want to connect with others. I want to be there for them. I want to serve them. So you're shifting from, um, you know, I'm out of control to I am in control. And then when you dig a little bit, you're thinking about something much broader, bigger, and I'm guessing more inspiring. I yes, know, yes, I absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you have a, you know, a, a very, a very clear mission statement and a big clear purpose already. And so maybe um, when people do that exercise, they may not come up with such a beautiful uh, crafted statement um, right away. So don't be hard on yourself. You know, really, this is, it's a game, it's meant to be playful, and it's all about word crafting. So, um, you know, if I have an example, uh, let's, let's do another one. Let's just brainstorm sure. together. So one of the problem, I don't have any money. Mm. So what the exact opposite is, I have money. All right, that already feels better if that's what I want. Um, and I don't know, how, how could we make that even more exciting, something more inspiring, like what ideas come to uh, your mind? I would say I have the ability to make choices. Beautiful, yeah. Yes, and I would say, um, even like choices that support my values. So, mm -hmm. hey, I can buy healthy food at the farmer's market, or I can support my local businesses by you know, um, shopping downtown uh, without being, um, you know, too worried about the price. Or, I don't know, what would we do if we had all the money in the world? Sure, sure. <laughs> send my kids to an educational experience or mm -hmm. create, um, create, uh, security for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I would like to travel or have, yeah, I love new experiences. So I would probably buy, um, you know, new experiences, ways to, uh, to explore and, and learn new things. Um, so, you know, hopefully people, um, you know, understand and, and kind of get a feel for what it's like um, to, to play with those words and and take something that really brings us down, makes us feel discouraged, those, those negative emotions where, you know, we, we just um, lose the ability to be creative and, and sometimes we forget uh, how to get ourselves out of that um, negative thinking or, or that problem statement that keeps us stuck. So just by flipping it, naming what we do want, and then embellishing it, like really into why do we want that? Mm. Why, what is behind, you know, everyone wants more money or, you know, everyone wants internet to work, but there's really a purpose behind that. There's something deeper. And if you can get to that, like, why is it important to you? Um, you'll get to the core of what's important to you and what your core values are. And that's when naturally you will start having ideas start feeling um you know more energized and and that's when you go out and, and you know take steps towards your goals so do you have um ideas or suggestions of how to apply this in daily life because sometimes you know when um maybe you bump into someone in the parking lot or or you're like you're in you're in a funk mm -hmm. and it's hard to shift your mindset in that moment. So are, do you have suggestions for little ways that people can invite this practice in their lives? Um, actually, how do we start when things are good, not, not try and apply this when you're having a crummy day? You know, what, what are some, um, some ways that people can invite this practice into their daily life in little ways? Yeah, so good question. So there are many ways of using appreciative inquiry in general and they're all like little practices like that but i would start by having a sticky note somewhere that just says what do i want mm. because it's as simple as that is um shifting from it's recognizing what you do want instead of what you don't want 
And um, even that makes such a difference. So even when you're having a good day, you could ask yourself, oh, well, you know, maybe you're having a good day because you're already getting what you want. And what is that? Why, uh, why do you feel good today? Um, and there are always like little bumps in the road. So when, I don't know, you meet someone and maybe it's just some negative energy or the conversation like doesn't go as you, as you planned, you can ask yourself, well, what? Why do I feel that way? What do I want? What would I want instead? Um, and whether it's a different kind of conversation, a different context for being a different kind of connection, if you identify what makes you feel the way you feel, which is not so good, then maybe you can pick up the phone or you know reach out to someone who makes you feel different. If you mm. know what you're looking for, you know how to find it. Does that... Um, yeah, absolutely. Just to to uh, reframe yourself as the agent in um, in shifting your perspective. You know, you have the ability to choose what you want more of by the way that you frame your thoughts and the questions that you ask. Absolutely, I think that's really powerful. Thank you. And you bring up the questions. So another example would be, um, you know, you get up in the morning and without even thinking about it, we ask ourselves so many questions all day long all the decisions that we take they are an answer to a question so you can play the operative during the day and you can ask yourself well, what's the question behind that so when you make a choice of um what what you eat for breakfast there's a question behind that you know at some point your mind had to make a decision so it had to ask a question what do i want to eat for breakfast so there are many ways of asking this question. If you're in a rush, if you're like me in the morning and breakfast is your low priority, you're rushing through, moving um, through the house and just like, okay, what can I just grab that will be quick, easy, and you know, how I just need to get out of the door. So that right there is a question and it's something you can change and it will change the outcome. It will change the decision that you make. So if I catch myself in this moment, and I changed the question to, okay, what's really my purpose here? Is it to get out of the house as quickly as possible? Or do I really care, and I do, about uh, you know, health and nutrition and being energized and not um, you know, rushing to the, <laughs> the, snack, <laughs> the snack room or closet by 10 o'clock? Um, so if you phrase it as what is um what can i eat right now that will keep me energized for the next few hours and is good for my health or you know something mm. like that that feels different and you have a new direction and new choices to explore so it's very likely you'll uh, you know eat something different so if you practice that over and over throughout the day you know um just ask yourself the question um what would happen if my question was different. That's, uh, that's a great that? reminder. I, I laugh a little bit inside because I have a four-year-old at home. So questions are just uh, flowing uh, mm -hmm. like waterfalls. And um, it's, it's sometimes it's exhausting to ask and answer questions. And I think that we, you know, we've been cultured into these habits of just accepting things the way that they are and not questioning the questions or um, mm -hmm. not taking time to, to um, be curious about the things around us because it, it takes a mental load to, to be curious. Um, so I think that your, your suggestion to, um, uh, to ask questions with intention really aligns well with mindfulness and um, mm -hmm. the practice of being in the moment, thinking about what it is that you want with intention. And then that question that you ask yourself will set you, as you said, you know, the two lines of dominoes, it'll set you on a totally different track um, of how, how you take action in your life. So um, mm -hmm. I think that is just such a beautiful example of ways that we can be agents of positive change in our own lives and in our communities and the way that we ask questions and show up mindfully with intention. Yes, and I would even invite, um, you know, self-compassion because we live in a society that um, does not support um, the, the curiosity and the uncertainty. We're all about answers. We're all about solutions. And the appreciative inquiry mindset is really about embracing the question playing with the question and living in the question and 
staying with it. So it's about um, constantly being in a question state, you know, instead of getting to our goal and getting to the solution and the answer and bringing up your four-year-old is, is such a perfect example because in appreciative inquiry, we almost, we look at children as examples because we want to go back when we are children. It comes naturally to be curious about the, uh, around the world. And that's how they learn and that's the, how they expand their minds. And then we're taught in our educational system and in our society, we're taught to find the answer, get on a path um, that's very linear. And we forget how beautiful and uh, it is to ask questions. And so, when you find it hard to identify those questions or change those questions or even the discomfort of wanting an answer <laughs> it's okay because it's really what we've been taught and what is um you know what is uh, kind of encouraged in our society so having self-compassion for ourselves that learning to be curious is a practice in itself and it is a journey in itself um so so just being gentle with all these practices is um important. That's a really good reminder. Thank you. Yes. So I kind of wanted to, you know, wrap up just summarizing a little bit what we've uh, talked about. Um, some takeaways, you know, the use of positive language really does make a, a difference in what you're going to feel and how your body is going to react. So um, using those micro moments of curiosity, great gratitude, um, you know, hope, inspiration, interest. So any uh, find ways to, to create micro moments of positive emotions in your life and, and see what, what happens. And also the reminder that it's really a practice. It's a mindset and it's not going to happen overnight. It's not a course you take and then you're perfect at it. It's a lifelong journey and, and even AI practitioners that I that I know that have been doing this for most of their lives, you know, they still enjoy the process and they still it's still fresh and new and inspiring because um, they when you constantly ask questions, there's always more to learn about and more to discover. So you don't end um, you, you're not looking for that end point. You're really opening up to a lifelong practice of being open, being curious, um, and and with the purpose of increasing your well-being, um, your resilience, and making progress towards your goals. So that's um, that was about it. If you want to learn more um, and practice more, I know I'm available, of course. You can find me at almacoaching.org, and I'll put that in the chat. Um, I also have a six week online course that you can take and that gets into each of the appreciative inquiry principles with a practice. So it's a self-paced course, but I encourage people to do it weekly so that they learn about a new principle. Um, and then they have a practice over several days, um, very similar to what we did. You know, that flip exercise is a great one to practice. And, and I send little appreciative inquiry bite size, so some quotes and inspirations and practices. Um, so if you join my email list, that's, uh, that's something that you'll have access to as well. Um, and I'll send a PDF, I'll put the PDF in the chat or Karen, I'm sure there, there's a way to share that with sure. people who will view the recording and it has the instructions with the flips so they can practice that at home. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alex, thank you so much for sharing your time and your experience with us. It really is um, such a beautiful invitation to think differently about how we show up for ourselves and for each other and to do so with curiosity and to, to be um, open to the questions and allow ourselves to be lifelong learners um, in the search of what's beautiful and what brings us joy and what we envision for the world. Um, so I think if we were all to apply those skills in our own lives, in our communities, um, we would just have, we'd see such um, uh, a momentous difference in how we show up for ourselves and each other. And so thank you for the invitation. It really is um, a beautiful question. Um, and um, I, I'm just so grateful uh, to share the space with you in this Pivot and Thrive community. And we have some opportunities coming up um, 
some workshops next week focused on marketing search and SEO um, with Erica Austin on Tuesday. And on, on Thursday, we have a workshop on resilience with Rachel Fitch. And I'm just so excited for the opportunity to continue learning with everyone and to be developing our skills as Vermont business owners so that we can support the small business economy and come together in new ways uh, to make the Vermont small business economy more resilient, connected and vibrant. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you. And if you're interested, um, Alex will also be participating in our wellness fair that's coming up in a few weeks. So you can continue the conversation with her and develop your practice even further. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Bye, Karen. Bye, Bowie.